Okay. Welcome everyone uh, to another Hospitalers online meetup. Uh, I'll start with a few quick announcements before we get started. Um, first of all, we're always looking for speakers who would like to present at one of these meetups. So if you have something hospital related that you find interesting and would like to share, then please let us know, for example, at the meetup page. Um, Second, for those of you who don't know, the Hospitalers Meetup is organized by the Zurich Friends of Hospital Association, which also organizes Zurichack, and we'll soon be holding um, the, uh, the annual uh, General Assembly for the association, which will be announced soon. Uh, so if you're interested in supporting the Zurich Hospital community, for example, by giving a talk here at this meetup or helping out at Zurichack, and you're not a member yet, then take a look at uh, zfoh.ch and consider signing up for membership. Um, yeah, with all that out of the way, uh, I would like to welcome today's speaker, Alexei Kudashevich, uh, who will tell us about great improvements to the hospital random package. Over to you, Alexei. All right. Uh, thank you for having me, Andreas. Uh, I'm glad to be back. Um, this is a really awesome meetup. Uh, I love Zurich. Too bad it's not in person, but hopefully one day uh, the station will all improve. Um, today I'm going to be talking about uh, the random interface uh, improvements that we made last year. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, actually, before we get started, I want to say if you miss something uh, in these slides, uh, they are available uh, in my repository, um, just like in talks, and there's a pull request with uh, everything that I'm going to be talking about. And um, if uh, you still want some more information about this talk. After uh, this talk is done, I will um, uh, post a blog post that I prepared for, uh, for this material. So it's gonna be sort of duplicated in video and in text for the people who don't like watching you know, prepare reading. Now, without further ado, um, what's random? Random is a package uh, that has been around for many, many years. It uh, gets its origin together with GHC at some point in the 90s. I couldn't actually find the, uh, uh, the original history. Or, um, give, has, give history on a, uh, on a package doesn't go that far, I think. And uh, because it was bundled together with GHC before, uh, it's, it's hard to separate the history as, as well. Um, now, it, uh, random package has been shipped uh, for many years with GC, as I said. Uh, later on, it was reduced, uh, uh, released as a package on a package and uh, was also wired in GC as, uh, as a core package, um, similar to like byte string and uh, text and so on. Um, uh, also, it uh, has made it, uh, its way into Haskell 98 report uh, and uh, it provided in Haskell 98 package. Um, which I didn't even know about it, its existence, but it's a, it's a thing on, uh, on Hackage. Uh, now, in 2005, there was a first ticket uh, on GC Tracker about uh, random being slow. And uh, that ticket hasn't been fixed until this uh, version that we released last year. So it, don't, it took only 15 years. Uh, so that's uh, uh, also the first version of the package that was released in Hackage, which was 2007. Um, this is a more recent history. About a year ago, I wrote a, a blog post uh, uh, for some reason uh, without any, any particular um, motivation or anything. I decided to um, benchmark and compare all of the available random number generating packages available in Hackage. And I wrote a blog post about it and where I uh, pointed out that random package is a real bottleneck and it's extremely slow. And uh, one of the things I said though, towards the end of the book was saying that if it was up to me, these are the things that I would do. And I forgot about the blog post. A couple months later, Dominic contacted me and, and saying, hey, do you want to do something about it? Uh, I'm like, well, what do you want me to do? Well, let, let's go ahead and fix all those issues. Uh, well, since I said if it was up to me, well, let's go ahead and do it. So, Three of us, uh, Dominic, Leonard, and myself, we did uh, spend the next few months uh, uh, fixing all the issues that we could find. And uh, I will be going through some of those issues uh, through, throughout this presentation. 
Uh, the, towards the end of this uh, endeavor, there was uh, two more people that were extremely valuable, uh, uh, provided extremely valuable help was Alexei Kudyakov and uh, Andrew Lelichenko. So thanks to them as well. Um, so all our hard work after four or five months paid off and we released this uh, random 1.2. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and see what is uh, uh, what is in random 1.2. But in order for us to do that, we really need to look at uh, um, the original interface. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and recap it for those of you who never use random for one reason or another. Uh, I will introduce it to you. For those who know, well, just bear with me. Uh, I'll try to make it quick. Uh, this is the original interface that uh, has been for, for a couple of decades, uh, and this is what we had, and it hasn't changed uh, until last year. Uh, random interface consisted of two type classes. One is a random gen type class, which uh, is a, uh, instances of this uh, we create for actual uh, random number generators, or pseudo random number generators. I'm not sure if I pronounced it right even. Pseudo, pseudo random number generators, that would be sound. Uh, one function is split. If we have a generator, we can call it, and it will give us two separate uh, uh, generators that, uh, when used, are supposed to produce, uh, in theory, uh, independent sequences of random numbers. Next function, uh, if we're given a generator, it will give us a random value of a, a random integer uh, and a new generator. And that random integer will be in the range uh, uh, from minimum and maximum that is produced by a genuine range function. So that's the gist of uh, what it is to be a, a pure random number generator. And there is another class called random, which is, uh, uh, there are two important functions here. Random, which is if given a generator that implements random gen, will produce us a random value of this type and a new generator and the random range, which uh, we, we can also supply uh, a minimum and a maximum value, which is inclusive, and it will produce a random value in that range and a new generator. And these uh, four functions that, that have a uh, default implementation and uh, pretty useless in otherwise. Um, so uh, how do you use this interface? Um, First, let me introduce a data type uh, that I'm going to be using throughout the slide. I wanted to show something more real life uh, uh, instead of just really basic types like integer and false and stuff. So um, first thing came to mind was uh, American phone numbers. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but um, everybody's seen American movies, so I'm pretty sure you've seen something like that. Uh, we have an area code, which is uh, according to North American numbering plan, and uh, uh, a local phone version of the phone number. So we have area code, which is just a three-digit three uh, integer, and uh, um, a local version, uh, a local phone number. And we have a pretty printer, which is just a show instance for uh, formatting the phone, the phone in this in this standard. Uh, nothing too exciting here, unless you have questions. So feel free to interrupt me at, at, at any point. As I mentioned before. Um, now, how do you use uh, original random interface in order to generate a, a phone number? So, this is the function that we're going to be using also throughout the slide. Uh, the, uh, something that takes a list of area codes, a generator, and produces a phone number and a new generator uh, with a, a randomly selected area code from this list. The way it's implemented is well, we need to generate a random number in the range from zero to the maximum number of elements in the list, which is going to be an index and a new generator. This is the original supply. Then uh, we use that new generator in order to generate a, a local phone number uh, in the range from zero to 10 million. And uh, that will give us uh, our phone number. And by the way, here we also say, uh, use this horrible partial function in order to pull out the area code from the list. Uh, this is not something, you know, I was just writing uh, because the, uh, again, this is a partial function, but it's perfect for demonstration purposes. Uh, so how do we use it? This is a, we, we uh, um, 
create a, uh, a pure random number generator, a default uh, random number generator that is uh, available with uh, uh, from random package. Uh, this initialization will use uh, system time in order for, for entropy or something along those lines in order to create a, an initial generator that can be reused. Again, I, I would not recommend using this function, uh, but it's been there historically. So there it is. And it's perfect for demo again. Now, uh, we call random phone, fun random phone function with a list of uh, 800 numbers and a new generator, and uh, we can get a toll free number produced for us randomly and a new generator, we can, which we can use later on for generating other random values. Why not another random phone number? Uh, with this area codes and we get a New Mexico phone number. There you go, boom, random. Perfect. This part has not changed and uh, uh, it is still available uh, in our random point point two version. And uh, just a quick word on splitting. Uh, for, for those that you don't know, uh, we can split a generator in two. For example, this is extremely useful if you want to parallelize uh, uh, random number generation or if you want to have deterministic uh, uh, distributed random number generation. So for example, you can send uh, gen two over the wire to some of your friends across the globe and both of you can produce uh, uh, deterministic uh, uh, random values. So for example, here we can, uh, we could have spun another thread for um, generating this phone number and another thread to generate this phone number and there is no sharing of any data between those threads, which is great. And they produce, uh, independent sequences. At least that's, the, that's supposed to be in theory. So what is that we were trying to solve? First of all, the quality of uh, a random number generator was not that great. Mm, and the performance was extremely terrible. Interface is not uh, quite correct. And um, we also didn't uh, have before this unified interface for the stateful uh, uh, random number generators. There were some initiatives, there are some packages like random source and one, I think random source is the only one I know that sort of tries to unify, but uh, I'm not particularly fond of that interface and it's, uh, uh, it doesn't solve all the problems. Um, so let's go ahead and look at those problems one by one. First is the standard gen, STD gen, which is uh, the default random number generator that was provided. What are the problems with that? Uh, horrible quality. It, it doesn't pass quite uh, as many tests. Uh, I'm talking about uh, testing frameworks for testing random number generators, not like the regular unit test or something. Uh, it produced a, a little bit less than 31 bits uh, uh, at a time. So that's uh, the next function. It will produce an int in this range. Um, it uh, uh, had horrible performance characteristics. In order to show you how bad it was, uh, here is um, a portion of the blog post that uh, I was analyzing. And here is the, the benchmark for the, I, I know it's a little, really small, but let's see if I can zoom it a little bit. No, it's not really good, enough. but uh, this is the next function um, for all of their available random number generators uh, in, in Haskell. So, so those, those are their performances. And random is the top. So it is the slowest despite being the de facto random number generator in Haskell. At least that was the case. And uh, that's just a little proof that how bad it was. Uh, oops. Uh, back. Okay. All right. Sorry, sorry. Technical issues. There we go. We're back. Um, so those are the issues that we, uh, we wanted to solve with SDG. The great part for us was the issue was practically solved for us. There was a package uh, split mix that was uh, developed by Alan Granus uh, just uh, about a year before our initiative, maybe a little less, I'm not sure. Um, 
And because I did all the uh, performance analysis, uh, we already knew that it was the fastest available Haskell implementation. So the only thing we were left to do is uh, um, making sure that the promised qualities of the, the algorithms actually uh, hold. So we uh, wrote some tests that test the actual random number generator. Uh, Leonard uh, actually uh, wrote a blog post uh, about how that was done and a little framework that uh, is available for testing now random number generators from, all, uh, from other languages. Uh, it has the property of generating 64 bits of random data in, in one go, which is a great property to have for performance. Uh, uh, as I said, yeah, it passes most of the tests for, and uh, it, this uh, uh, splitting works also very well. It actually produces uh, sequences that are quite in time. Um, so, by the way, this part, uh, this uh, this talk will both mostly will be about uh, the uh, the last part. Uh, so I'm going to try to rush uh, through the first three. So Gen got taken care of poor performance. Um, Stdgen was slow. Yeah, I already mentioned that. Uh, generating of all other types was done through integer. You can imagine if you want to generate a an in32, for example, there is no point for us to be going through an integer type, which is an arbitrary uh, uh, precision. Uh, it, that's another source of uh, extreme slowness. Gen range was an, an actual mistake because, uh, at least in my opinion, uh, because the only random number generator that uh, produced uh, uh, values in the range that is not of uh, set bit length, bit length was the default random generator included with random package. Other, all others uh, that are available produce either 32 bits or 64 bits. Uh, so this is how we solved it. Uh, performance, of course, as I mentioned earlier, we switched to split mix. Generating ranges, instead of going through some integer and uh, coming up with some crazy arithmetics, we used a, a really cool technique called bit mask with rejection. Not gonna go into that, but there is a link uh, the blog post that, that describes it quite well uh, that uh, deals with uh, uh, generating random numbers in a range, avoiding bias, and does it and while doing it really efficiently. And uh, we also did a quite uh, did change the random gen uh, quite a bit. We deprecated gen range and next functions in favor of gen word 64, gen word 30, or gen word 32, depending on the generator, you can supply uh, those functions. And um, added a couple of other functions that can be customized uh, if your generator can do some better on those functions. Uh, let's go ahead and look at that actual definition. So this is how our random gen class looks now. These are the deprecated functions, uh, which can still be used, but uh, if you use them, you just get a, a slower implementation. So, uh, and here are the, the, this, uh, these functions that are the new ones. And this is the minimal implementation. One of these two or next generate. This allowed us to uh, change this class in a backwards compatible manner, which is great. The important part about this slide is none of these functions are, uh, are important to the user of a random generating library. These are only important for the implementers of uh, RNG uh, algorithms. So for example, you want to, you want to implement MERS and Twister well, then you will need to create an instance of that class. Otherwise, the only function is a user you can care about is the split function. Um, so the next problem, oh, by the way, everything that I said so far was enough to fix all of the performance problems that uh, uh, were present in random library all these decades. The, what I'm, uh, the, the slides that come next, uh, just improvements to the interface. So the next Sorry, problem. Quick, uh, quick question. Um, the suffix capital R, what, what are those for? Oh, great question. Uh, this is a range. So you can supply a, a maximum value here. So this way you can generate from zero to some, uh, to some number more efficiently if your algorithm allows that. 
but they all have default implementations, uh, so you don't need to worry about it unless you uh, really want to customize that, so to speak. Thanks. Oh, and I just noticed we also had a question in the chat, I think. Um, oh, yes. I think that was in the very beginning about the Was guy argument. still involved? Uh, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> the, I'll tell you this. Uh, um, my work mostly uh, uh, concentrated on implementing the interface uh, uh, that I'm going to be talking from now on. And actually some parts of this. Um, if you want to... Uh, I, I could answer that if you... Yes, please. There you go. He, he he sort of was, and he sort and he and he probably he wasn't really right. So he <coughs> he encouraged us years ago to use his algorithm, which is split mix. So that's his. But uh, um, I can't remember the name of the guy now. The the, the person that did it in Haskell did all the work for us. So he Oleg was very Rivers. sorry. Uh, Oleg? Oleg. Oleg. Yeah. Yes. Oleg. Yeah. So Oleg's done all the work, but. Yeah, Guy Steele and, and Simon Payton Jones encouraged us to to use split mix, uh, but Oleg did all the work, so we built on all that. So so very tangentially, I think is the answer. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, oh, I let him know we'd done it, and he was very pleased. So <laughs> perfect. Um, okay, let's go. Next comes the problems with the interface that we. We'll try to solve. First problem is a random class. Uh, it might not be apparent at first uh, what the problem is, uh, but I'll go through some examples. Uh, it combines together random and random R functions, but which don't make sense for all of the types at the same time. For example, if we hit, uh, if you generate a, a random value, you expect it to be generated in some uniform distribution. Uh, if you generate an integer, for example, which has infinite precision, what does it mean uh, a uniform distribution on infinite plane? Well, we cannot generate it physically. I mean, you know, we don't have enough memory, for example, for once. <laughs> but um, so random function by itself doesn't make sense. And that's why its implementation just generates 64 bits of random data and convert it to an integer. Uh, random R, however, does make sense because we can generate uniform distribution on a particular range. Floating point numbers, they have a similar problem. You cannot generate a, a random value uniform distri uniformly distributed from infinity to infinity. Um, despite that floating numbers that we can represent technically are limited in, in, the, in, the, in the number. Uh, but uh, one extra problem is that uh, the numbers that we can represent, they not be equidistant from each other. So for example, we can represent large numbers, large floating point numbers uh, uh, with very little precision over small numbers with a large precision. Combine that with the uh, special values, this becomes a real problem. And there is uh, quite a few more uh, gotchas to floating point numbers and we didn't really solve them all, but we have input the uh, generators quite substantial. substantial. Um, uh, another problem is uh, random R uh, function. It doesn't make sense for, for types that don't have a particular order on them. For example, RGB. Well, what does it mean to generate a, a color, red, green, blue color from, from this RGB to this RGB? Uh, especially, you know, if it's a nonlinear RGB, well, it, it, no three-dimensional square makes sense. Okay. Uh, UUIDs, what does it mean to generate a UUID from this UUID to this UUID? So, for example, the current UUID implementation just throws an error for random R. Uh, the way we solved it was introducing two separate type classes, which is a very natural solution. We have a uniform class that allows a, a uniform distribution of the types that can uh, generate, uh, uh, for example, an int 8, right? We can generate values in 8-bit values, you know, in a full range, uniformly. And uniform range that uh, can take uh, a region, and we, we can generate a random number in this region. This way, integer float and double get a, a uniform range, but not a uniform. Hmm. Um, 
you might notice though that there is uh, something new here. It's, uh, uh, it's those functions are monadic now. And I will be talking more about that in a moment. First, let's go ahead and take a look at how we could create an instance for this class. For example, a unicorn class and this uh, RGB data type that I was talking about, uh, red, green, and blue. Uh, since it's monadic, oh, by the way, just for completeness, uh, there is a type signature for unicorn uh, right below. Uh, we use our applicative uh, syntax for generating red, generating green, and generating blue. And uh, you might notice that we don't thread generator around. Instead, this generator now is mutable generator, which you can pass to the uniform function. And uh, uh, behind the scenes, it will be mutated, so to speak. Now, because uh, uh, I also want to claim that this uh, mutable interface or monadic interface, it is actually more general than what we had before because this, thanks to this uniform and stateful gen classes, we can actually recover our pure function. If you look at this uniform function, which is also available from random package, has exactly the same signature uh, as random function, except uh, the, the constraint here is uniform instead of random. And the, the same case is with uniform rm and uniform r for ranges and uh, this is the way we can generate the, the rgb so we pull out the generator from the system and we call uniform gen function or uniform gen and produce a, a random rgb uh, with eight big values for each of the channels all right so that was the uh, the problem with random class. Uh, are there any questions about that? Great. Um, I have a question. Yes, sure. So if it's stateful, why do you need to pass gene to those uh, functions? So you're passing g to the all three instances of uniform there. Yes, uh, it is. Think about this as uh, uh, some generator that can be mutated. I don't think just in the, in the sense of uh, uh, state T. And I mean, it's a great question. I will, uh, I will talk more about it. So I hope that this will answer it for you. So okay, in other words, hold off that question. And if it doesn't get answered a little bit later, please bring it up again. Now, this is uh, uh, one of the, my, my personal major goals for this endeavor was coming up with a stateful monadic uh, interface. And by stateful, I mean, there is different uh, uh, classes of mutation. There is state transform model that we, we all love and know that uh, sort of simulates mutation, but not really mutation. It just threads the uh, variable around. Oh. Uh, then there is uh, uh, mutable variables like IORF and STREF. Those are actual true mutable variables that mutate pointers behind the scenes. And there is also class of generators that uh, depend on the large mutable state. For example, these three packages, they provide a very similar API for um, random number generators that require a very large vector to be mutated. Uh, and if we were to use a pure vector, an immutable vector, it would be extremely slow and unfeasible. So they have to actually mutate this large state. And, um, uh, and we wanted to account for those uh, random number generators as well, provide sort of the interface for them, as well as this, this first two. So let's go ahead and see how it panned out. First, what I'm gonna uh, uh, do is compare with the state T approach that was already available to us before we actually started with, uh, with, with this whole thing. First, I'm gonna present this function. Uh, the, that we already saw before. Uh, it was called random phone, which is now uniform phone, because we already know the distinction between random class and the uniform class. And uh, we use this uniform R uh, function to generate uh, random values in a range. And this is the uh, approach that we can take uh, using a state T model. Basically, we take this uniform R, and instead of giving it a, a generator manually, we pass it to the state function that will uh, turn this into a state T action and will state the generator for us. So the only difference here is that 
uh, is that we don't have to deal with this g tick g tick tick and so on and then we just run state and it becomes a, a function with exactly the same type signature and uh, it will actually be compiled to exactly the same code if it's a strict state in transform um okay here's the new approach and again the this is the same state t implementation as we saw above i added here just for for comparison so to speak so let's go ahead and compare first and foremost both of these functions are monad one is uh, uh, works in a state t monad that is based on some other monad and this one is uh, uh, some monad we don't know, but it uh, has to have an instance of state or gen in this model. Okay. Uh, we pass a generator here. Um, and generator here is, as, uh, uh, is the actual state. But mind you, those are two different generators, despite they have a same name for the type variable. We also pass the area codes, of course. Uh, that's still the same. But let's look at the implementation. Instead of state uniform R, we use uniform RN function. But it also accepts a generator as an argument because that's a mutable generator. And uh, um, same thing here uniform RM instead of state uniform R. And again, mutable generator. And otherwise, it's, uh, it's still the same. You know, we get the index, we get the uh, local phone number, and we return it in exactly the same way. Okay. Um, how do we run them? Well, we have run state, which we all uh, all very well familiar. It takes a state action, the actual state, initial state, and produces the final value and a new state. And similar thing here, we have run state gen, which uh, takes an initial generator. It also takes a, an action, which is a state monad action, but it, this action I also accept a, an argument, a, a mutable uh, generator, and produces again a, a random value and a new generator. And we use them in a very similar manner. Run state, we give it an action and the initial generator, and here we also. Um, uh, give it a generator and an action. I put uh, those, uh, uh, the order of arguments uh, just because it's my personal preference, no other particular reason. Uh, and maybe, you know, it, it, it will improve the type errors if you mix up run state and run state gen. Because those actions are, are different in the end. Uh, so that's, that's quite important. And as you can see, we, we do get exactly the same uh, phone numbers generated and exactly the same uh, generators generated for us. Okay, this begs the question. If they are so similar, what the hell is the point, right? <laughs> Why not use the AT as we did before? So the claim is that this uniform phone M function can be used with all other mutable random number generators, not just with a state T. Let's see how that works. Let's take an example of a ST monad and a ST gen, uh, which is just a wrapper around an ST ref. Um, if you never dealt with that, uh, we'll think about an IORF, very similar that works in uh, an IO monad. Um, I made this example a little bit more contrite, uh, made this argument here, area calls an STREF just to simulate a, a situation where, for example, we have a mutable variable and it forces us to be in ST mode, for example. Uh, so we go ahead and read this STREF, we get the area calls essentially from, from the mutable variable. And then uh, we call exactly the same function as we did before, uniform form M on the area codes and the stgen that we that was past time here on here. And the stgen has a generator in it and a state token that is attached to the uh, st monad. And that generator has to have an instance of random gem. We already we already familiar with random gem. And look at this uh, type signature. It is exactly the same type signature as before. 
well, not here, but it is exactly the same. You get uh, a phone number and then you generate from a generator and a list of variables. The way we run it, we call run stgen function that is uh, available for, for us from a random package. We give you the generator and an action that uh, gives us a mutable uh, stgen. And here we just construct an STRF, but that's not, not terribly important. The most important part in this slide that uh, we use this uniform phone and function in ST mode, naturally. Uh, I would never recommend writing this, uh, uh, this piece of code because using as a state T in this situation would actually be faster and uh, more natural. Uh, but we do have ST, so I just wanted to show that it's possible. A more useful example would be uh, something that we cannot simulate with state T or ST. It's more of, uh, what if we sprinkle some concurrency into the mix? For example, let's implement a function for generated multiple random phone numbers. Now we return a list of phones uh, in separate threads. Each of those phones will be generated in an uh, individual uh, uh, thread. Um, so how do we do this? Uh, again, we get uh, a, a list of area codes and uh, a generator, the random number generator. We call this function with mutable gen. I'll talk a little bit more about this function and how it works, but for now, just bear with me. Uh, what it does, it accepts uh, a pure, pure uh, generator and it gives us a mutable generator. In this case, it's an atomic generator, mutable generator that can be accessed and mutated uh, uh, concurrently. In this action, we gener generate a, a random number between one and five. This is just so we can figure out how many threads we want to spawn. Uh, and then we pass that end to replicate concurrently a function from async library, which will uh, run this action n times on n different threads. Um, and again, as you can see, it's the same uniform function and uniform phone m function that we wrote before. Nothing new here. And again, we, we, use, we can use all other uh, function, monadic functions that are provided by the random library with this generator and with the other ones that we saw already. And uh, back from this with mutable gen action, we get a list of phones and a new pure random number generator that uh, uh, we produced as a result of this uh, multiple actions. And then we can return it as phones and, uh, and a new generator. And here is an example of how we can use it create a generator with a, some seed and we call this function with a list of area codes and then we just print it. And here is, in this case, it was three threads that uh, were spawned randomly, uh, so they were spawned and generated random phone numbers for us. Um, I think it's pretty kind of, pretty kind of cool. Uh, if you have questions, again, please should, feel free to interrupt. Maybe a quick, um, just to clarify, and I guess the atomic is suggestive there. This synchronizes on uh, the generator? Uh, it's a lot free. It basically uses atomic and modify IRF behind the scenes. So that's that's all the difference. Uh, uh, that's all the reason why it can be used uh, concurrently. Uh, I mean, I've, of course, it'd be possible to use MBAR, but I would never recommend doing that uh, for this use case because, first of all, it will be slower and uh, it's a source of depth. We don't need it. Uh, for this, uh, using a, an IORF and atomic modifier is perfect scenario. Yeah, but um, I mean, the, the question was more, it doesn't do split or something like this to generate independent. Oh, this is a perfect question. Uh, this would be a, a better approach. If you generate splitting, a splittable, then split it and give it an, a, a, a completely independent that you're in a number generator. However, if your generator not, is not splitable or there is not much contention, for example, if you need to generate a random num number in your application uh, quite rarely, but you still access it concurrently, this is a perfect scenario because this way you don't need to check multiple generators at the same time per thread because you might have you know, 
hundreds or thousands of threads. Um, and you can still use it currently. And we, because it's not, there's not much contention, it doesn't become a bottleneck and it works just fine. Cool, thanks. Oh, and I think I just interrupted another question there as well. So. Yeah, uh, I've got a question. Um, I guess uh, since this is an atomic generator, which is accessed by multiple threads at the same time, uh, the result we get from this function isn't deterministic. And it can change Absolutely depending correct. on the threads. All right, Absolutely yeah. Correct. And I guess if you were to split the generator and pass it in sequence in a deterministic sequence to all the threads, it would, it would be deterministic again. Uh, yes, it would be determined. Yes, yes. Uh, mind you, the the order would be non-deterministic here, but the phone numbers would be still deterministic. Uh, replicate concurrently, then can reorder the. Yeah, because you know we, we don't we don't know ahead of time which thread will finish uh, or will, yeah. will, will be mutate first, right? But because the generator will still be the same, it uh, the phone numbers generator will be exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, th I think there's also some some uh, concurrent functions which which actually keep the order of the thread spawned. Uh, mm -hmm. But I guess it's uh, it's not this one probably. Uh, if you're talking about uh, par or uh, uh, some something along those lines, there yes, there are determini There is deterministic power. It, it is a thing. Yeah. And it, it is possible. Um, it, 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 to find it. Yeah. Yeah. Usually, you know, uh, if you're dealing with concurrency already and parallelism, uh, just bite the bullet and accept it's not that not non-determinism. Uh, because it, 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 the line becomes easier that way. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's a different topic. So let's not let's not dive But it's a great topic. It's one that uh, I, I I quite enjoy. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and talk about the stateful gen type class that we've introduced that makes those things possible. If you squint, it looks almost exactly like a random gen, except it's monadic. And the generators that passed, uh, that uh, we created an instance for uh, is actually a mutable generator, not a pure random generator. Um, same thing, all we need is implementation for these two functions and the rest will be, uh, the rest has default I will talk a little bit about this one uh, towards the end. Uh, random uh, uh, provides four generators out of the box with one more coming out, uh, one more on the way, which uh, can work in STM. Uh, this is the first one that we saw, uh, state gen, that works in any mon monad that is a monad state. Uh, there is ST gen that we saw an example. There is an atomic gen, and there is an IO gen, which is just like an atomic gen, except it's faster, but not thread safe, which is because it does use atomic modify and we need to use modify IO. And those two they obviously has to work have to work in the monad IO. Um, the, this fact that it's a monad state here is a peculiar one uh, because we can actually compose it quite nicely with MTL library now. For example, uh, let's take an, uh, let's adjust our uniform phone function a little bit and instead of passing area codes as an argument, we will uh, expect it to be in a monad reader. So we can go ahead and ask for area codes because this monad uh, is an instance of monad reader and it is uh, readable on, on area code. So we get that. And uh, we call exactly the same function uniform phone name and it will just work because it all, all it's gonna give us an extra constraint to take full gen. And uh, now we can compose it quite nicely with uh, run reader T and run state. And we recover back the exact same uh, type signature that we had before. Here is a, uh, now we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into the implementation. This uniform phone reader state M, uh, as I said before, expects a mutable generator. This is what the, the type class is for after all, for mutable generators. And we pass it state gen M just 
created out of, out of nothing. And this is because, well, state T is not mutation. So this state gen and is just a proxy data type that uh, keeps track of the pure random number generator that it will be passing through, through, um, through its actions. Uh, so this is a, a, just a cute example of how we can use uh, it so with MTL library and with other state transformers, so, so to speak. Not state, so other mon uh, mono transformers. Um, this brings us to the uh, distinction between what's mutable, what's immutable, and how they relate to each other. Uh, in this library, we did make a, a not, not an assumption, but we design interface in such a way that each mutable generator will have a, an immutable counterpart. It doesn't have to, but it does. Uh, so for example, uh, state gen mutable, which is just a proxy, and the immutable part, so funny part is that the immutable part is the actual generator. For the ST gen, the mutable generator contains an STREF with a generator in it. Uh, the IOGen has an IOGen ref, now uh, an IO ref with a generator in it, where the pure part of it, the immutable part of it, is just a mutable around the generator. And the same thing with an atomic, uh, uh, atomic generator. It's just a wrapper around an IO ref, and the immutable part is just a mutable. And, um, the reason why it's done this way is because we have a type class that relates those two. And it's extremely useful for type inference for those to be new types because with this type family, we can create a one-to-one -one mapping between an immutable and an immutable generator. Um, so any generator that can be frozen, if you think uh, in a broader terms, if you can convert a random number generator into a seed that is not mutable, that's the, and that, and you need to restore it, that's the type class that you can implement. And what it allows you, it can it allows you to freeze mutable generator into the immutable one, and throw immutable generator into the mutable one. And for those who've uh, used, uh, for example, mutable vectors and mutable arrays, this would be a quite familiar interface where you can uh, convert between the two. <coughs> um, let's see where this can come in useful. This is a more of a practical uh, example. Um, maybe a quick question to the uh, previous slide. Please, please, yes. Um, is there a reason that uh, the, the frozen gen was chosen at, as a main type class or uh, couldn't it have also been done the other way around that the mutable gen would have been on the right side and the frozen one on the left? Yes uh, um, and no. <laughs> um, uh, give me one second. We, we've tried that approach and it caused uh, some problems. Uh, but outside of this library, I'm taking this approach and uh, In short, it's possible, but it, it doesn't work in the end. That's yes, uh, you know, uh, if you post this question on Slack, I will send you an example where we've, uh, we've tried this and I will dig up what the reason why exactly we chose uh, the other way around. Okay, sounds good, okay. sounds good. Uh, Okay, so this is where it comes in. Uh, let's take a, 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 a hypothetical situation where we have a, a generator that is stored in a file and we can, we wanna read it from the file, use it and then write back into the file. And um, moreover, we wanna do it in such a way that it will work for a variety of type of generators. Well, the first thing we want to know we want to do is use some serialization library because uh, writing manually uh, files and is is not a nice experience. Better use some, some framework for, for for doing that for us. For example, if it depends on a 
need large mutable state and we don't want to figure out how to write it. We just want a serialization library do that for us. And uh, um, so we can write a function like this. Let's uh, for this example, let's use serialize uh, library uh, with the British spelling, not the American spelling. Um, and use uh, its type class. Oh, um, and here's the important part about the, the serialization libraries. Uh, and actually in a whole Huston community at uh, all, there is not many classes, type classes, not many interfaces that are provided for mutable uh, data structures. Most of the type classes are provided for pure, uh, for pure data types. And serialization classes are especially uh, shine in this area because if you look at any serialization type class, they usually provide something like put to get or encode decode some sort of functionality. But uh, this is usually done in some, some monad that is uh, doesn't give you access to I/O, uh, which is what we need for mutation. So we have to deal with uh, uh, immutable data structures when we do serialization. Now, here's how we write this. Uh, we pass through this uh, file path, this function uh, file path where our generator is stored, and an action that will work on a mutable generator. But uh, this file path will store an immutable generator that has a type class serialized, the instance of that type class. And these functions read and write, they require this instance. So, what they're going to do, they're going to read this. Uh, uh, pure frozen uh, random number generator, the seed, if you wish, and then pass it to this with mutable gen function that we've seen already before. And here's its type signature. On the with mutable generator function, it expects a frozen generator and an action that works on a mutable generator and produces back for us a value that we return here and, uh, and a new frozen generator. So with this, we can get this new frozen generator and store it into the file and produce the result. Is this clear what this function is uh, designed to do? If you have questions, please shoot. I think there is no questions. Perfect. I'm a great explainer. <laughs> of course, it's a joke. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and look uh, where else this uh, mutable interface is useful. And this was a particular goal of mine. Uh, unify those mutable interfaces, uh, mutable, mutable generators with the generators that rely on a large mutable state. And MWC random is a quite popular package uh, and is the one indeed who uses a mutable vector to represent its, uh, its state and a pure vector for, for the seed. And until recently, it was not even uh, dependent on a random package because, uh, well, they were so different, uh, uh, they couldn't be used together until this version uh, in WC random 0.15, 0.0.1. Uh, that provides these two uh, instances for us. First is the stateful gem instance for its a mutable generator that has a state token, uh, which is uh, uh, a prim state. It's uh, from a primitive package, a prim monad, uh, which means it uh, can work in any monad that is IO state or any transformer that is based on those uh, uh, two monads. And another instance it provides this frozen gen for the C, as long as, again, this monad is uh, a prim monad and uh, this is the relation. So a mutable generator for the seed is this generator. So there is one to one mapping. We can freeze and thaw from seed to mutable and from mutable to seed. And how do we use this? We create a seed using this function from system random and WC. We thaw this uh, immutable seed into and WC generator. And we use exactly the same function we've, that we've done, wrote, have written before. 
a passive uh, MWC generator in this case, and we get ourselves back a phone number that is friendly. Whew. Um, so that was a, a great achievement that I was really, really happy about to be able to provide this unified interface. And now we can use the, the, uh, the function that we've written before, the write file serialized. So we wrote that, let me remind you, we wrote this function without even knowing about MWC library. And now we can use this with MWC random as well as with, with all of the beautiful generators. First, of course, we need to provide the serialized instance uh, for the C because it's not uh, to us out of the box, but that's quite easy because uh, serialize uh, gives us instances for vectors and seed is essentially just a, a wrapper around the vector. So we call from seed and encode it. And in order to decode it, we decode it into a vector and then call this conversion function that converts an unboxed vector into the seed part. And then same way we create a, a, a seed from system, which probably uses some system entropy like time, something else, I'm not sure, I haven't looked at it. Uh, and we use this, we first write this seed into this file because you know we want to use it uh, as a file. And we call this with store gen function on this file with our uniform phone M function. And we just pass it the type that we want to, we, we expect this function to work on. Without this, of course, you wouldn't know uh, what's the, uh, the type of the generator that is being stored in the file by passing the seed. It can figure it out, figure out the rest, and it gives us a random phone number. Okay, uh, I think this sums up the state monadic stateful interface. So, uh, if you have any questions, uh, then please do so. Um, this was more of a, a, a nice to have thing. Uh, Sometimes we need to generate a bunch of random data at once rather than one at a time. So for example, if we want to generate a binary block, uh, aka a byte stream, uh, the main way would be to uh, generate uh, eight bits at a time uh, as a list and then, uh, and then pack it into a byte stream. This naive approach is extremely inefficient because first of all, in order to generate, eight bits, we need to generate 64 bits and discard 56 bits of good data. Uh, for, and that will happen for every element, for every byte in the, in the byte stream. And the other problem is uh, there is a good chance that, uh, well, I should say there is a good chance. There is a chance that the list is not gonna get used and uh, we will have, end up with allocating the list uh, as well as the byte stream, which is suboptimal, of course. Um, a better approach would be to allocate a chunk of memory and write 64 bits at a time uh, with the important part that we need to ensure that we do not rely on uh, CPU NDNs, with big NDN or little NDN or, uh, can mess it up if we have an algorithm that you know travels cross architectures. We want to keep that consistent. So. Uh, and we provide such function from a random library, which is called uniform byte stream. And as an example, we grab the uh, uh, MWC generator and generate a byte stream of like 15, and pack it for free printing. And this is a random byte stream essentially. And for completeness, we can use the same function with a pure random number generator that we construct uh, out of static seal, seed with the current state gen. And we get some binary data as well. And there is a way to override this default functionality for generated, uh, um, generated byte strings. Uh, it doesn't apply to any of the uh, random generating libraries that we've discussed, or even that I mentioned in a blog post uh, about performance. Uh, but some uh, uh, random number generators, they can generate more than 64 bits at a time. For example, I don't know, cryptographic generators. And uh, this would be a nice way to, uh, nice function to be able to customize for. By the way, a disclaimer, it should have been said right at the beginning of this presentation. 
everything that I've said so far uh, has to do only with the pseudorandom number generators that are not suitable for cryptography. This is for use cases such as simulations and uh, property chain testing and so on. Uh, but it doesn't mean that we cannot use cryptographic random number generators for those uh, scenarios as well. For example, if you want to uh, do a simulation using a, some cha-cha algorithm that is suitable for, for cryptography, well, feel free to do so. And you should be able to create an instance of a stateful gen uh, type class as well. Um, uh, one final addition to the interface uh, that uh, we had was this random gen M class. Um, it is a little bit contrived with the functional dependencies. And uh, this is a type of class that unites together generators that are mutable and uh, also have an instance of random gen. And the sole reason for this is uh, so we can use, we, we can provide a random N and random RM, basically, uh, monadic versions of uh, our random functions that we, we saw before. And this is done for a purpose such as if there is a library out there that has a random type class instance and we want to use it in uh, our monadic interface, with this approach, we will be able to do so. So, just so you know, these functions are available in the library as well. And some statistics uh, of our work. There's 266 commits, 150 pull requests with 100 of them merged. Uh, so we did get some scrutiny and all of those uh, uh, merge requests and a whole bunch of issues. Uh, so tremendous amount of discussions with, with people from even outside of our community. We closed six existing issues uh, and three of them we partially solved. Uh, while exploring this uh, mutable interface, I also discovered a bug in GC type checker, so that was reported, that was nice. Um, some uh, summary of achievements. So quality of uh, default random number generator has improved. Performance improved dramatically you know, on orders of magnitude. Uh, interface, as you saw, is uh, improved also. Uh, documentation is much more, uh, much more uh, um, expressive with doc tests and a bunch of examples and the documentation of edge cases. There is a modern test framework and benchmarks is uh, uh, now in place with uh, you know, coverage reports um, and comparison with previous forest implementation. Uh, one thing that I was extremely pushing during our endeavor was uh, keep the breakage to the minimum because this library has been around for uh, you know many decades and there is a lot tremendous amount of code out there in the wild that depends on on the interface uh, on those functions being for example on a random class on a random R and random functions being available um, and Surprisingly, we were really good at this uh, last bullet point because it, uh, the only breakage we really had to deal with was uh, bounds, uh, the upper bounds upgrades, uh, because a lot of people can really try to follow PVP to, to a T. And um, the only libraries that had to uh, see some uh, updates were the ones that provide RNGs, the pure and number generators. And we supplied some uh, pull requests to those libraries, the ones that actually maintains majority of them, unfortunately. Uh, so we have some future plans. Uh, more instances for uniform and uniform range classes. Uh, there is uh, um, uh, some generic capability for, for deriving those type classes. And there is some more work on this uh, in, the, in the open pull requests. Um, floating point number generation can be improved. Uh, then um, I would like to see an interface for generating more complex data structures, you know, trees, arrays, lists, uh, 
if you, for example, a function that you can give it a size and a random number generator and it will give, generate this data structure for you. And then uh, distinguishing splittable versus non-splittable. This is something that I should, uh, a potential solution I showed right before this, this talk. And the mutable generator for the STM, which is also, uh, last two have already a pull request uh, pending. So special thanks to Dominic Leonard for working with me on this, Alexei and Andrew for uh, you know, also providing some patches and uh, new functionality. And uh, Alexei, special thanks for lots of scrutiny on the stateful interface. He's also a maintainer of MWC random package. And so it was extremely helpful. Uh, he was also the person that updated MWC random to work with random. Daniel, special thanks for making it possible for us uh, to actually merge all our work and making a release. There were some administrative uh, problems that we had to do a little bit. Oleg for split mix and also for some feedback. Matthew and Richard for uh, uh, help with administrative issues and advice overall in Haskell. So, and thank you all to you all for listening. Thanks a lot. It was a great talk. And uh, yeah. yeah, great work on the random package. Um, any questions from anyone? Wow, I described it so well. No questions. <laughs> oh, everybody is so confused. They don't know what kind of questions to ask. Oh, wait, wait. Uh, Neil, I believe you were the one who asked the question about the state. Uh, I hope yeah. I answered that for you. Well, unfortunately, my internet connection went out in the middle, so I'm going to have mm. to listen to the recording. I'm sorry. But yeah. if I still don't understand, I'll come and bug you. I have great news for you. We're going to do this, uh, uh, redo this talk in our internal meeting that we complete, so it's no problem. Okay, that's good. <laughs> I <laughs> that have been a couple weeks. Sure. Um, so there's a lot of tutorial material out there going back years that shows how to use the traditional um, random package. Um, what kind of changes would need to be made to that to kind of make best use of what, what we have now for simple use cases? The only real change, if you don't want to rewrite a whole bunch of code and pure uh, random number generator style works for you, the, you know, the generator pattern. Uh, the only change I could recommend is using uniform instead of random and uniform R instead of random R. But you don't have to. Right? So technically, all of the tutorials, all of the code that is available out there should still work, except it will be faster and the random numbers generated will be better. Okay, yeah, I see. But if you want to use uh, your code with uh, other generators other than split mix, and uh, for example, you want to write a more general program that would work for all of the generators, stateful and pure alike, then I would recommend using uniform M and uniform RM to generate values and stay in monadic interface because you can always recover the pure interface from the monadic but it's a little bit harder to get from uh, from the pure to the monadic uh, because of this oops let me actually do this it is only possible for uh, uh, for generators that uh, have this instance random gen and as we saw mwc for example algorithm cannot have this instance By the way, uh, in case you want to play around with any of the examples, uh, there is a Jupyter notebook available that uh, I use to generate the slides. All of these examples are runnable. And uh, so, for example, if I rerun this, it should give me exactly the same phone number. But you know, make this region. Oops, this will give me an error. So 
Okay, this will be in a different format. Yeah. Awesome. That'll be um, also on your GitHub. This is on my GitHub. That's correct. This is uh, in, a, uh, in this repository. And, so, and since I gave it the talk already, I can go ahead and merge the pull request. <laughs> and uh, also, uh, a blog post about this will be available on my website, which is alexi.coalition. It worked out. My last name worked out very well with Switzerland. <laughs> awesome. Um, okay. Any more questions or? Right. If not, then once again, thanks a lot, Alexei, for the great talk. Uh, thanks everyone for joining Thank and for those questions and uh, questions and thanks everyone involved in this work for fixing random for all this time.